anyone who knows me knows that I've had a lot to say about the government's response to COVID-19. There are constitutional issues at hand, and we can talk about things in the theoretic, but uh, these things affect real people. They're, we've got governors and we've got mayors who have usurped the authority of the Constitution, and their justification for this is that, well, we're only trying to save lives. Well, there's no solutions to this. There's only trade-offs. So you save a life here, you lose a life there. And the governors and the mayors are not in a position to decide which lives are more important to save than others. I want to share this video with you that I just watched and to consider the fact that, that this is not an isolated situation. There are, for a myriad of reasons, there are people whose lives have been lost and there's others whose lives have been just destroyed because of the government's response to COVID-19. And as sad as it is that people die from the disease, that doesn't mean that their lives, the lives that are theoretically saved through the government's actions are more important than the lives that are lost as a result of the governor's and the mayor's actions. We have a constitution. It's the highest authority in the land. We have a state constitution. It's the highest authority in the state. And we've got governors in almost all states, all but eight states, who have usurped the authority of the Constitution. And we've got mayors all over the country who have usurped the authority of the Constitution in order to exercise what they consider their authority and their power. And the reality is that all of these are illegal, they're unconstitutional, and they cost lives. They, too, since I buried my son. My son died from the coronavirus, as I've mentioned, um, but not in the way you think. Um, human condition is not to be socially isolated. And, even, and I heard someone say, well, it's like summer for these kids. It was, it's not like summer for these kids. It's just not. Anybody says that's, it's an idiot. This is not summer. You have parents who are stressed out because they lost their jobs. That's not like summer. You got kids who have no interaction with their friends other than through Fortnite and FaceTime. That's not like summer. You have kids who can't go go run off their energy at PE class. They can't get that one hug from their teacher that they needed. Um, there, there's social and emotional challenges beyond comprehension. And we're only gonna begin to understand the effects and it will be incredibly hard to track and incredibly hard to prove my thesis um, because the network effects of how this all happened, the butterfly effect is, it's too complicated, but my belief is uh, that we are in, have a bubble, a social and emotional bubble that's about to burst, and it's been coming for a while. I think Hayden was an incredible kid. He wasn't depressed. Uh, he wasn't uh, someone who uh, moped around. I mean, like any teenager, he was hard on himself at times. Probably a lot, a lot like me, pretty competitive guy. Um, and like anybody, had its own his own insecurities here and there. Um, my son, the story behind my son, for those who want to know, back in December, he got a brand new monitor for Christmas. That's what he wanted. He was a big, big time gamer, and I got nothing wrong with gaming. Uh, that's what he wanted to play Fortnite. He's an incredible Fortnite player, one of the top for his age in the country, and um, very proud of that gift and, and that one of those wonderful for a couple of months right before the virus was start starting and back in february like like i used to do when i got mad at uh, mike tyson's punch out or whatever it was um he got mad at fortnite turned around and chunked that controller over his head again just like i used to do and um hit smack in the middle of that monitor broke it and we told him son you know you can't do that I don't care about the monitor, but I care about how you react. It's just you can't do that. When you're not getting another one. Sorry, dude. Um, and, you know, he negotiated and tried every which way to convince us, talking to my, what we call, my, my dad, we call him Pee, -pee um, trying to get him to fix it. And you can't fix those new LCD monitors, um, or not cheaply at least. And, um, but we said, you know what, if you, 
opportunity to, to learn a lesson, do some hard work of your own, do some more chores around the house, you treat your sister nicer, um, and maybe we'll talk about it, we'll get you one. And he held up his end of the bargain. Um, February, Mar March, he worked his butt off, um, did some things around the house, did many things around the house. Was, I could see it, just a wonderful change in how he treated his sister, which brother and sisters always fight, there's nothing unusual about that, but just learning, he was evolving, he was growing, he was becoming a man, 12 year old boy. And, uh, you know, a week and a half ago, we had a wonderful day. Um, we're, me and Hayden were supposed to go get haircuts at my office. Um, both of us were getting shaggy as can be. And um, my water in my well went out. And, uh, you know, I needed help to fix it. So I called the smartest guy I know, which was my dad. Um, and I hadn't seen him because of the virus. I hadn't allowed him to go to work. I said, you got to work from home, man. I was worried about my dad just like everybody else. Uh, but he came over, helped me fix the will. It was a beautiful sunny day. We had a glorious time. Me, Hayden, and him fixing it. My dad even gave him a little mission that he had to watch something on the well. He was real proud of that. And I remember Hayden coming from me in the kitchen. I gave him the biggest hug and I kissed him on the hair. I hugged him tight for some reason. I didn't know what would be the last time I'd hug him. My dad did the same and we talked some more. And Hayden went upstairs to his room. Um, and uh, my dad had to go. Uh, I had to take a phone call. Um, April went to go um, pick up a friend. You know, the social isolation, we kind of reached a point where we felt like it was counterproductive. So we're gonna let her have a friend spend the night and they were gonna get some food. And my dad left, April left. I went into my room real quick. Just my little daughter, me and Hayden were at home. I took a call, it took about 25, 30 minutes. Walked outside and uh, my eight-year-old daughter came down the stairs and said, hey, did hung himself. And I ran upstairs. <sighs> I tried. I want nobody ever feels to see what I saw and to feel this pain. I want nobody. And as we found out, you know, we were in shock the first couple days. Just, just how, where did this come from? How did this happen? I'm a horrible parent. Uh, horrible. And uh, come to find out that he had broke his monitor again. Broke his monitor again. And in a, just a rash of, of emotion and probably anger at himself and he was scared to get in trouble and embarrassed and all these emotions. You know, I went in his closet and rudimentally did something that I, I know he regrets. The kicker of it was, it was three days before his 13th birthday. And he was so excited about that birthday. Um, so excited about his birthday. And he was gonna get a controller, some new controller that was gonna really make his game Xbox game better, or his uh, Fortnite became better. And um, and so when he broke his monitor, I believe he felt like he ruined his party. He ruined his birthday. He already couldn't have a birthday party because of social isolation. Imagine that as a 12 year old boy, you know, that's just, that's gotta be. Those are the things you look forward to as a kid. And then you, then you, and you accidentally ruin it because you break your monitor and you aren't gonna be able to use your birthday present here in a couple days and you can't go see your friends. Um, and you're, you know, you're stuck. You didn't have PE class to run it all out. And, you know, you know, all those things, everybody's playing for it and across the country. Kids are staying up later than they are. So they're, again, they, they, have, they don't have the skills. We as a society, me as a parent, us as parents haven't necessarily given them all the tools to, to properly handle. And in that moment, um, probably not understanding the, the finality of the situation, in the closet and got himself in a situation I believe he couldn't get out of. Um, and might have been, have been, have been an accident. My eight-year-old daughter saw some of it. We don't know exactly what. We'll let the counselors, professionals help us in that. Um, but I know she, once she saw blood coming out of his nose, she came and got me. She did the right thing. I don't think she even knew what, what was happening. She knew blood. She came and got me. Ran upstairs. I didn't have my cell phone on me. Um, 
And I told her, go get my cell phone downstairs. And she ran downstairs just like an amazing human being and got it for me. And I, and I happened to have an AED, an automatic electronic defibrillator in my house. And I said, go get that medical thing out of the pantry. She'd never seen it and didn't know what it was. And she brought that to me. Very proud of her. She was ready to, she was ready to execute. Um, and I said, hey, you go outside and go. I called 911 by this point. I said, go outside, keep the door open, and wait for the cops. Um, wave them down. She ran outside as fast as she could. Um, one thing I'm just immensely proud of her about is during that moment, about a year ago, we had done some training at my house on the West Point grad. And, um, probably could have should have done more training, but um, I said, hey, if there's ever an issue, you go run over to this guy's house. And if there's ever another issue, you go, or if you can't get him, you go run to this guy's house. And rather than just waiting outside, this little girl, eight years old, eight years old, Eight years old, last of September. Ran to my neighbor's house, got my, my neighbor, ran to the other neighbor's house and got them. And as I was given CPR, I was on the verge of collapsing. I um, literally was on the verge of collapsing. I was praying to God just to give me the strength. I never knew how hard that is. Um, and out of nowhere, and all my, my neighbors appear and help me take over and help me, help us try to save him. Um, Social isolation is hard enough for adults. It's even more hard for our kids. And um, I have been saying COVID killed my son. I believe it, but not how not how we think. I believe my son would be alive today if he was in school. And that's not to discount the massive suffering around the world around this virus. I thank you all for listening to me. This is I uh, need to get this off my chest. I'm now one of Hayden's soldiers, who is a soldier of God. Um, and what's a horrible tragedy, um, I'll be damned. I'll be damned if, if I don't make this a little bit better. And politicians, for those of you who um, made the decisions you made, I know, I'm not, I know you're not perfect, but there's got to be accountability. Um, and not, not accountability like I'm doing in a bad way, accountability in what's, what's legally right, my, my rights as a citizen, which is to speak out, which is to influence change. And if I don't think you're a good enough leader, I can spend my pocketbook and my time and my effort to get you out of there. I don't want my son in his memory to be the last mistake he ever made. Nobody wants that. I don't. But I want his memory to be that smile. I want his memory to be his heart his dedication, his tenacity. Um, and I want his memory to be that he made a big difference in the world, a little flame, a spark around the world. I love you all. Thank you all for your support, all my friends, all my family. Um, and buddy, see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please. Subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be bringing some other uh, fresh content here very soon. And uh, we want to cover what's going on in this country. Uh, I'm going to also put a link to the original channel where I found this video. Uh, please like and share and subscribe to that person's channel. Uh, it's, it's important that we start looking at fresh sources for the news. Uh, the, the news media, the mainstream media, the commercial media... Yeah, they're they're not giving you all the truth. If you want to find the truth, you have to search for it. You have to dig for it. And uh, we're here. The independent journalist is here to to give you the true news. Uh, I've got some neat stories coming up uh, soon. I don't want to spoil uh, what what I've got on stat, but I've got uh, on the back burner here. But I've got some cool stuff that's going to be coming up. Hopefully, in this next week. Uh, I'll be posting stuff, but if you if you subscribe and you sign up for notifications, you'll be the first to know and first to see some fresh original content. Uh, so be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button. Thanks very much.